Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we'll be dealing with Power Machines N5 on the Native Program. And then today we want to talk about what we call the, the compressors, which is your chapter 17 <coughs> on Power Machines N5. So firstly, you should know a different type of, of compressors. And then at N5, on Power Machines N5, you'll be dealing with what we call the reciprocating compressors. And then the reciprocating compressors, they're found into two, which is the same. We have the same acting reciprocating compressor, and then we have what? A double uh, acting. <coughs> reciprocating compressor so basically on your n5 power machines you'll be dealing with it with the same uh, acting reciprocating compressor which is the one that i drawn on this on this body so uh, <coughs> as you can see we have the suction stroke and then we have the compression compression stroke and this is the this is the piston and then we have two we have two valves so while this the piston is moving down it allows the air to to move inside and then on this valve it's allowed to to open which allows the air to move on this on this area while it's the valve uh, the second valve is being is being closed and then that's why this piston is moving it's moving down and then when the piston is now moving back this valve is going to close and this one is going to to open which allows the pressure to to go out so this is how uh, the uh, the single acting compressor works and then you should also know about what we call the uh, the ideal uh, indicator indicator diagram it consists of <coughs> Of the pressure and also of the, of the volume. As you can see, we have different different stage. You can first stage, second stage, third stage, and then the fourth stage. Okay. So from this diagram, you can you can quickly identify that on the pressure, your P4 is equal to the P1. So you can just write here, P1 is equal to P4. Because they're on the on the same level. And then you can also identify that P P2 is equal to P P3. P2 is equal to P P3. All right, okay. So <clears throat> on this side of this diagram, this is the side of compression. And then on compression, we have two, three methods that we can, we can use for compressing, which is the adiabatic, and then we have the polytropic, and then we have the iso isothermal, whereby the uh, T1 is goes to, to T2. And then on this other side, this is the, the expansion. So this side is going to be your compression side, and this one is going to be the expansion, expansion side. And then let us check on the volumes. On the volumes here, we have what we call uh, the clearance volume which is v, v3 and then, and then it is aligned with what with v3 which means your vc is going to be equal to, to v3 from this diagram and then you can also see i have identified also ve which is effective effective volume ve is goes to <coughs> and then it starts from v1 up until v v4 so we can say ve is goes to v1 minus v v4 and then we also have what we call the swept the swept volume which is the Vs. And then on the sweat volume, it says from V, V1 up until V3. So to get the your sweat volume, you're going to say V1 minus, minus V3. Alright, okay. So these are the volumes which are, which are found on, the, uh, on, on this diagram, which is the, uh, V clearance, uh, the effective volume, and then we also have the, the, sweat, the sweat volume. So these are the formulas that you're going also to, to use when you're doing your your calculation and also we have <coughs> the formula to calculate the indicated power of the, the work done and we have two formulas that we can use to calculate the indicated power which is uh the following n n1 and then p1 multiplied by v1 open brackets and then it's going to be p2 of p2 over p1 close bracket and then n minus 1 over n minus one and then we close close the bracket so this is the formula you are going to calculate the uh, sometimes they can say calculate the work done or sometimes they can say calculate the uh, <coughs> they can say calculate the indicated indicated power and we can also use the the other formula which is n over n minus one uh m multiplied by r and then uh t2 minus t t1 so now on these formulas it depends on what you are given if they give you the mass uh, and then the temperatures you can also use the first, uh, the second, the second formula. And then if you are given also all the pressures and everything, you can also use the uh, the first formula. And then we also have the formula to calculate what we call <coughs> the volumetric efficiency. Volumetric Effi efficiency. All right. Okay. So on calculating the volumetric efficiency, we have two formulas. They can say either in interpol condition or then on the atmospheric condition. So the first method is the interpol uh, interpol condition. 
interval condition. This is the formula that you are going to use to calculate the volumetric efficiency on the interval condition, which is going to be VE over VS multiplied by 100%. And then what is your VE? Your VE is going to be the effective volume over the, uh, the, sweat, the sweat volume. And then, as I said, we also have what we call the atmospheric small. condition okay on the atmospheric condition this is the formula that you are going to say VA divided by V VS multiplied by 100 100% so this is the formula that you are going to use to calculate the volumetric efficiency while it's you are all we are given <coughs> the condition of the interval condition which is uh, V over VS multiplied by 100% and then if this the atmospheric condition is going to be VA uh, <coughs> over the S multiplied by 500 percent. All right. Okay. So we also have uh, the other formulas whereby we have the formula to calculate the volume of what of a cylinder is going to be Vt per minute divided by n n per minute <coughs> multiplied by two. And then here it depends. If it is a single state, you don't have to multiply by two. And then if it is a, uh, a double a double uh, acting reciprocal compressor, and then you have to multiply by by two. And then we also have the four other formulas to calculate the the volume of what of a cylinder, which is the general formula that you know, which is pi pi d squared divided by formula by, by by the length, and then we also have the formula to calculate the mechanical efficiency, which is going to be the integral power divided by the by the shaft power, and then we also have the formula to calculate the mechanical uh, the motor efficiency, which is going to be the shaft power divided by the input power, and then you should also keep in mind this this formula. This is going to be <coughs> the free air, which is the pressure of the free air, volume of the freeway, and then also the temperature of the free air. It goes to P1, and then you know this is the effective volume, V1 minus V4, this is the effective volume divided by, by T1, it goes to P, P2, open bracket V2, uh, minus V3, divided by, by T2. So basically these are the formulas that you need when you are doing your, your compressors. So on my next uh, episode, I'm going to show, we're going to do the calculation or we're going to do a, an example where we'll be doing the calculation using the formulas that I have used all of these ones. So catch me on my next video.